All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Acer Aspire A515-54 series. Full model is A515-54-30BQ. All right, so we're going to be using a JS1, J1, or PH1, whatever you want to use. Uh, we're going to remove the screws from the bottom. You want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern. I remove them. All right, so we got three here, four here, and then four down here. Okay, and um, this laptop has a little battery reset hole right there. So if for some reason your laptop isn't turning on or something, <clears throat> you can try using a little folded out paper clip or maybe a sim eject tool to press and hold that button. You'll feel it click when you press on it. Uh, you can try pressing and holding that for about 15 seconds and then try and plug it in and power it back up. If that doesn't work, then you might have a more serious issue like a damaged motherboard or something. But anyways, let's go ahead and get all these screws out. If this video helps you out, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Alright, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well. Because that's what the algorithm likes to see. You can just write like hi or whatever. And I'll respond to your comment as well. All right. None of my comments are auto response, by the way. Um, I actually just post the same thing, telling people to like and comment and stuff. Uh, or subscribe, I mean. So, yeah. All right. It looks like their computer's already on. Let me shut it down real quick. Um, I don't know. They said they need the battery to be replaced. Uh, but it's turning on, so I don't know. Maybe the battery life just isn't good. <clears throat> So we'll see. I'll wait till it's completely off. The keyboard is still lit up. There we go. All right, so what I do is I get my fingernails between the palm rest and the bottom cover, and I'll push with my thumb on this side, okay? You wanna make sure not to push on the touchpad, just on the palm rest area. So we're gonna do this. Let's see if it pops out. Some models, the clips are in different spots. So let's see, this one might be in a different spot. I might have to start from the side. Let's, there you go, okay? So work on the side. Be careful not to press down on the keyboard. Okay, you don't want to damage that. But there we go. We're going to carefully close this up now. <clears throat> Continue working on the side. So now that we've got that, I'm going to get my fingernails in there, push down with my thumb here and pull up. And then I'll just run my fingernail across and see if we can pop any more clips. Let's see the front. Nope. Okay, so the clips on here hold on pretty strong. There we go. It looks like we're going to have to work our way to the back first. Okay, so... Mm, that's still holding so we're gonna pull this side so that way it kind of pulls it in that way and hopefully that will un uh, release those clips because these clips are kind of stuck wow the clips on here are pretty strong okay I mean you can see this side came out easily so I'm gonna push down with my thumb here and see if that helps nope mm. pulling this way nope Let's see. <clears throat> Let's try a suction cup since we have access to this area here. And you can see that kind of popped up a clip over there. Okay, but not quite all of them. You can see there's one more clip here that's being stubborn. So, let's see. Wow, that clip is super strong. Okay, maybe what we're going to do now, since we have like all of this undone, let's see if we can get this out. So I'm going to get my thumbnail here and then we're going to kind of try and wiggle this and see if we can undo those clips down there oh, let's grab like this I guess wow what is holding on to this thing you can see sliding my fingernail in there is not working this doesn't seem to want to pop up let's try this again oh okay there we go somehow that worked now <clears throat> and then now I think we just pull this up and it should unclip hopefully there we go okay <coughs> dusty <sighs> okay so there we go we got that open <clears throat> the battery doesn't look too bad normally it will let, get inflated or something but it looks okay I do see quite a bit of dust in here so I'm gonna just brush this to loosen the dust and then I'm gonna actually take this outside to blow the dust away because I don't want to blow this all in my work area okay so we're gonna just brush this stuff up here to kind of loosen it <clears throat> all right so let me go blow the dust out. I'll be back. See you guys in a bit. All right, so I'm back. Here you can see there's no RAM here. 
I believe it's DDR4 memory. Um, I don't know if I have one on hand, but usually I can tell by checking if a DDR3 RAM slot fits and yeah, nope. So definitely it's DDR4 RAM. <coughs> as far as I know, there's usually no size constraints. So you can put a 16 gig. If there's a 32 gig, you can put a 32 gig. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and just quickly pull the battery out. So there's this tape here. Let me zoom in. Okay, so we got this. We're gonna carefully peel this up. And here you can see we have this little connector here. Usually what I do is I use my fingernails at the wings of the connector and we kind of just wiggle this. Also, take note of the connector. You have the red wires going towards this connector and the black wires going towards this keyboard connector, the larger one, right? So we're gonna pull that out. <coughs> All right, I actually have some spam call going on right now. Okay, cancel that, there we go. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and remove the battery. When you go to put the replacement, make sure you don't flip the connector upside down. So this is what the replacement looks like. Um, they use some thinner wires here, so hopefully this battery is also just as good. I mean, it should be better since this battery is like dead. But uh, okay, it looks like they don't have anything holding this battery in place. So we're gonna peel this adhesive off. Okay. I think I worked on like a very similar model to this just recently. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna peel this up. Oh, the adhesive, I guess, got stuck to the battery, but there we go. We'll set this battery aside. If it has any, if the new one um, doesn't work much better, then we'll probably switch it back and return the this battery because I don't really see much difference with this. All right, let's quickly look at the internals here. You have this connector here for the USB port as well as the headphone, 3.5 millimeter headset, jack, whatever you want to call it. All right, this has a little flip latch that you would flip this up. Okay, there's no screw holding this, so you want to be careful. Flip that up, and then you can pull these cables out. I'm going to leave these in place because they're not having issues with that, but I just kind of wanted to show you. Same thing here. Wireless card is right here with the wireless antennas. If you want to remove these, you go from the tail and you pull straight up. I have videos showing that. I don't want to remove those because sometimes the solder is bad and those little solder points can just rip off on sometime, uh, sometimes. It's pretty rare, but I don't want to take that risk, All right? You got this little connector here. This is for the keyboard backlight connector. Um, there's another little connector here, which I'm not too sure what that's for. Maybe on some models they fit a hard drive here or something. I'm not sure. Um, but there's that might be also for a fingerprint reader. I don't know. All right. You got the keyboard connector here. This one also has like, it's different. This one has two slide out tabs. You want to be careful not to rip, pull it out too hard. Cause I've had some customers or people that tried to do it themselves and they rip that out. You want to slowly like pull it. If you want, you can pull one side and then go to the other and just work your way. Um, this is the keyboard connector. Um, you got this little cable here for the speakers and the wires run down one here and then the other wire to here. Nothing's holding the speakers in place. It's just rubber. You can just lift the speakers out. There's an M.2. This is, I'm pretty sure, PCIe NVMe. Does it say? Yeah. It says PCI Express here. So this is an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. Usually the NVMe SSDs only have one notch, as you can see here, but this one has two. Um, and then you have a CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery here. All right, CR2032W. It's a three-volt. All right, connectors there, make sure you get it right. The red wire is going towards the SSD, the black wire is going towards the outside. Um, then you got the LCD LVDS connector. If you're gonna mess with this, make sure after disconnecting the battery that you open the laptop and press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power. You can also hold this one for 15 seconds uh, to be extra safe, but do both. All right, you got the fan connector underneath here. Same thing, it has the little wings. You just wiggle and pull it out. Two screws holding it. I don't think there's anything else holding that down. Um, and that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and put the battery in place. Okay, we'll just get this dropped into place. There's nothing, no screws holding it down. It's just that little tape, this tape adhesive that's just on top. That's not really holding it down either. So make sure to be careful. You don't flip this upside down while the battery is um, in there or you're gonna get the battery to flip and fall out, <laughs> all right? So we got this connector, make sure you get it lined up. Okay, line it up straight. And again, make sure you have the right wires in the right direction. And then we're gonna pinch the thing together. Well, only one side's going in, so you wanna be careful. 
you don't want to try and force it in crooked at an angle let's see is this huh this connector looks a little funny there's um let me see if i can show you this it's like there's something stuck in the hole there so let me check the original battery okay i'm gonna have to kind of like move that little broken whatever thing that is in there out I don't know what's going on with the connector there. Let's see if I can show you. See that? Come on, focus. Don't focus on my fingernails. I know they're nice, but... <laughs> Alright, you can see that? There's a piece of plastic in there. So I don't know what's going on with that. Let's see if I can somehow fix that. Uh, that thing is really tiny. I don't know. How am I going to get that out? Let me see what the other battery. Yeah, so I just need to move the plastic over to the side. I was lining up the two connectors to see. So I'm gonna use this and try and pull that plastic out of the way. Okay, let's see. Hopefully that's good. I don't know why the connector is like that. Bad manufacturing job. But uh, let's get this line back up and we'll try and pull the red one. Okay, pulled the red side in first and there we go, and it worked. So we'll pull this in all the way, get that tape down. Again, this tape isn't really holding anything, but uh, we can go ahead and put that back in there. Okay, and then tape that down. All right, let's zoom out here. Now that we've got all of that, now we're just going to get the uh, bottom cover back on and then we'll see what we got. All right, not really much to this model. Okay, so we'll get that, line this up. And we're going to push this side down first because that's what came out last. Okay, and then we'll work our way up. Click it all into place. Okay, to be safe, I'm going to actually put the corner screws in first because those help hold the hinges in place. So let's go ahead and put these screws back in and then let's open up and see if it powers up okay. Alright, other than that, that's pretty much it. Again, hopefully this video helps you guys out. If it did or does, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Oh, let me plug it in and make sure that it has a charge. I think the battery either isn't charged or, I don't know, because it's not powering on right now. So let's plug this guy in. Oh, they have an aftermarket charger. Maybe that's the issue, not the battery itself. Well, let's power it up. It's powering on. Okay. Let's see if I can do F2 or delete to go to BIOS. Let's see what's happening. Right now there's nothing on the screen. I don't know what's going on. We didn't really do much with this. Is it on? It just turned itself off. Okay, it's turning itself back on. <clears throat> See the backlight is on uh, for the keyboard, but nothing is coming on the screen. Getting a little worried because we didn't mess with the CMOS battery or anything, so I don't know why it would be doing this. Unless the battery is just not enough power, the keyboard went off and on again. Hmm. There you go. Okay. So <clears throat> maybe it somehow act as a, acted as a BIOS reset. That's kind of weird. And I don't think I pushed the BIOS reset button either, so. Very strange. All right. Uh, there you go. And it's on. And the battery here is showing no charge right now. So I'm going to have to let it sit for a while. Oh, actually, it's showing no battery right here. That is really weird. So let's restart this one time and see what's happening. It's acting like 
I mean, it's showing the battery is charging, so I don't know what's going on. But let's try pressing F2 or delete, see if we can go to BIOS and see what's going on. It could be the battery, the replacement battery is not good. Oh, it didn't go to BIOS, so I don't know if Acer has another key press to push to get it to go to BIOS. Um, it's still showing the battery thing, and then it's probably going to go to no battery here. But let me try something real quick. So I'm going to press that. I'm going to restart. I'm going to hold the sh left shift key and then push restart. So hopefully we can go into the um, repair menu or whatever you want to call. There we go. And let's see if I unplug this if it's going to stay on. Nope completely off right away so maybe that battery is bad because it was fine with the other battery so I don't know what's going on uh, let me go ahead and pop this out but other than that putting back all the screws that's pretty much it so again hopefully this video helped you guys out I'm probably gonna have to let the customer know and see what they want to do might need another replacement battery um, maybe someone returned that one it had a weird connector but yeah that's pretty much it thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one like comment subscribe watch a few of my other videos and yeah let's drop this Bye. Okay, so I found out maybe what's going on. I don't know if it's the connector because I think most of this stuff matches. Um, actually, there you go. This is 15.2 volts. This is only 11.4, so it's not powerful enough. I think that's what's going on. Um, and this is the model number here, AC14B8K. So this is the original battery. Um, the customer lived kind of far, so they weren't able to bring me their laptop. So I did it based off the laptop model number, and that's why we got the wrong battery. So I'm going to have to order the new battery, and then they're going to have to bring it back. Um, but this one you can see, 3220 milliamp hours, right? This one, does it say? It says 4200 milliamp hours, 3880. So technically it has more power on the new one, but yeah, because the voltage is lower on the new replacement battery, it's not going to work. So I'm going to order this battery, and then I'll replace it with the right one, and hopefully that'll be good. All right, that's pretty much it. See you guys later. All right, so I got the replacement battery, AC14B8K, plugged it in, and it's working and charging. So, yeah, that battery model number, even though it fit exactly the same in here, was slightly off, and that caused it to not work. The voltage was a little different, so this one you can see, 15.2 volts, 48 watt hours. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.